Welcome to SantaPod for the 2018 main event, the traditional first round of the FIA and FIM European Drag Racing calendar. Always one of the biggest events of the year, and especially interesting this season because over the winter, SantaPod replaced the old asphalt track with a brand new concrete one, giving us an amazing racing surface for many years to come. Exciting things happening here at SantaPod. One of the scariest things you would ever encounter in your life at first. You really are like, you have, there's nothing else like this. So you have absolutely not, like, no idea whatsoever what to expect. And you've just got to go for it. You know, it really is like mind over matter sort of thing. So yeah, but you learn and you get used to it and you've always got to respect it. You just don't fear it. You never know what happens in these cars. Everything can happen. It's a safe sport, but um, I have respect from the cars. No, I, I love it very much. It's uh, like a real thumping experience, you know, and you can see it when riding it. It's a lot of work and it's, it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of fun, actually. So, but, but I enjoy it enormously, otherwise I wouldn't do it. So. You get sort of seven or eight hundred foot, the motors really come on song and it is the best feeling and sound on the planet. Honestly, it's just unbelievable. But. And we're looking at the first of four qualifying sessions scheduled to take place over the next two days before we go into Monday's eliminations. This is the first outing for FAA Top Fuel, the 10,000 horsepower monsters. We have nine teams here this weekend from Europe and of course the UK, and they'll be competing for just eight places in eliminations. There really is nothing like the noise and power of these nitro-burning beasts when they come to life. In 2017, the FIA Championship was won by Duncan Nicola. Actually, we went uh, through our problems last year and we worked hard this winter on them. Uh, obviously, um, uh, this is going to be another year. Uh, actually, I've done some uh, physical training because um, I've seen a lot of progress in, me, in myself last year and uh, I worked on uh, my reaction time which is very important in the sports and uh, obviously we've uh, kept the same team and also the same sponsors and uh, hopefully this will uh, work out good on us for this year. Obviously we're going to do our best to win it again. Um, my mentality works that I have to start from zero again. So I'm going to do my best to uh, not underestimate no one. And for me, that is a good thing. Also racing in FIA top fuel is India Urbaka. It isn't long ago when I decided to drive a car. I was horse riding for many, many years and I started drag racing four or five years ago. So when I was 19 years old. I'm 23 now, so it's not that long ago. <laughs> India is, of course, the daughter of the very famous Urza Baka, and she's already proving herself to be a very talented driver. The team come all the way from Switzerland to race with us, and hopefully later in the season, we'll be seeing Urz out in competition as well, and possibly even pairing off against his daughter. That would be quite something to see here at Santa Pod. So we're all set for the first pair to come out in qualifying. India Urbacher closest to us, and in the far lane, that's Sweden's Stefan Gunnarsson. Huge amount of concentration on the start line before they launch down the quarter mile. Clicking off slightly early, they'll be pleased with that one. Um, for me it was a good day, we have this new car, it's not a brand new car, it's my old A fuel chassis, but um, we rebuilt it to a top fuel car. So we got out of the track for the first run just to make a half pass and test it and it felt so good so we went to the 800 feet and 4.7 out of the track with a new car, that's okay. <laughs> I have a good team and I have a good car and Santa Pod has a good team. So I think that's like a match made in heaven and it means good fast runs. At least that's what I'm expecting to see this weekend here. 
Now I'm guessing that the first few runs are not going to be fast because it takes a while to get these cars dialed in because they're not just put your foot down and drive, are they? It's very, very technical in terms of getting 8,000 horsepower to the ground. That's right, you're absolutely right. My crew will go to the track and see what the tracks and will be there like and then they'll make the game plan for tomorrow. But like you said, that it will take a round or two to find the night, nice setup for this track now, and especially because it's all concrete. So it's promising and it tells that uh, we will run there very fast one day, but when the day is, that only the time will show. Always coming to Santa Pod, it's like coming home. So I really enjoy myself being here. So the next pair of top fuelers take to the track. Nearest to the camera in the auto glim lane we have Anita and in the left coal fire lane it's Britain's Liam Jones. Anita first won the championships in 2000 and more recently in 2016 and Liam is hunting for great things this season. And for a first stab at a brand new track, that 4.32 shows pretty good performance from Anita as the teams start to get a handle on what settings to put into the car. Supercharger burst panel blue for Liam, so he just trickles down the track. Stig Niergaard and closest to us, that's Mickey Kagera, two more giants of European top fuel racing. Mickey won the championships in 2015 and 2014. Stig blazes the tyres at the hip, Mickey launches well, but off the power now. Stig nails it again to come flying past. Finland's anti Horto completing his burnout and closest to us is reigning champion Duncan Mikolaj from Malta. Duncan's car is provided and tuned by Runafield Motorsport who have a huge history in the sport so it shouldn't take them long to get a handle on things. And look at that first time out on track this year. 3.92 at 309 miles an hour. What a start. Absolutely stunning. The most important thing is the elimination day in drag racing which is the last day. Um, uh, the weekend is very tiring, so to keep focused on that day and in that small moment, the physical training will help you to keep focused, you know, that this is a very important moment. Yeah, I do have bruises, but there again I have a heavy training program, which includes running, bicycling, and this winter we have a cross-country skiing a lot, gym, so I feel that I'm in a good physical condition and I can take it. So, and I need to have the strength until the last final round, whenever that is going to happen. And I feel that I can do it. So the proof is, who cares? Well, that puts Duncan firmly in the lead in qualifying for the moment as we jump into qualifying session two. Mickey Kagrid left lane, Liam Jones closest to us. And Liam also proving the CBD Asylum team have what it takes. 3.95 at 307 miles an hour. This is going to be one heck of a fast racetrack. India Urbacher in the left cold fire lane, facing Anti Horto in the right auto glim lane. India put in a respectable time of 4.74 in Q1, so I'm sure the team have made changes. A few final adjustments. No improvement for India, but look at that time for Anti jumping straight into number one position. You know, you sit in a car and you know, okay, Dad has driven this for many, many years and he's still nervous. So I have to be a hundred times more nervous than him because you never know what happens in these cars. Everything can happen. It's a safe sport, but um, I have respect from the cars. Stefan Gunnarsson in the right lane and in the left lane it's the queen of European drag racing, Anita Makula. We already have three cars in the three second zone and I'm sure Anita would love to join them as indeed would Stefan. Looking good. 
And yes, she does it, a 3.95. So at the end of day one in the FAA top fuel, the table looks like this with Bjorn Martinson still not having made it down the track. But it's Antti Horto who's holding on to that number one spot. Never, never seen season start like this. Just uh, on a first day, first day, so impressive numbers. So I, I'm expecting a lot from this season. On a first run, we had some new car difficulties. On a second round, we hit our personal best. And I think with this new new Santa Pod track, it helps a lot to start because it's it's so great. No, I mean everybody was a little bit apprehensive about the new track. Nobody knew what to expect, so, but I mean, some guys got down it with real good times first off and then we had bad shake first run, when we sort of honed in on it, we knew where to go, so 395, 307, can't whinge at that, yeah. Now you haven't been driving these cars for very long, does it take quite a while to really get to grips and get in tune because things happen very fast? Yeah, 100%, I mean, when you're doing the licensing runs, even your first, second season, you're like, you're really just getting used to driving the car. We're sort of at a level now where we're, we're ready to win, basically. Your brain sort of, it slows everything down eventually. You start processing things really well and, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. We're going to move away from FIA top fuel now and switch to two wheels, still with nitromethane fuel and just as extreme. There are two nitro classes in the bike world, Super Twin Fuel and Top Fuel. As the name suggests, these Super Twins are based on twin cylinder machines, traditionally Harley Davidson's, whereas Top Fuel bikes are based on custom built, higher revving four cylinder engines. So join us after the break as we move into the extreme world of nitro bikes. Welcome back to the FIA FIM main event at Santa Pod. We're moving into the nitro bike classes now. We'll uh, have a good shot at it and uh, the, the field is uh, large now, nine uh, contestants this year, uh, which is good and good fun. Uh, some new guys back from uh, Germany and, uh, and, and Norway. We're looking forward to racing them again and uh, well, we have to step it up a little bit as everybody's going faster and it's the target of the sport, so we will do that. Well, we are back to basics again. We had a massive engine uh, failure here at the uh, main event last year, and uh, we continue with the problems in Hockenheim. Uh, so that was the end of the season last year. So this year we've been uh, doing <coughs> a lot of new stuff inside the engine, especially in the cam, uh, valve trains and stuff. And this is Ronnie Orson on the Godfather 7 bike. He later improved on this run to take fifth place in qualifying with a 6.98. Ground pounding vibrations and sounds from these awesome machines as they start to get a handle on the track. Martin de Haas also improved on this run to end up in fourth position with a 6.87 at 206 miles an hour. Britain's Neil Midgley on the Canon Engineering Lucas Oil bike took the number two qualifying position with this stunning 6.56 second run. It sounds very easy to go just straight, uh, like a quarter of a mile, but uh, actually the, the bike has another idea about going fast, so it's usually a lot of work here. And uh, at the end of the weekend you're a little bit sore and, and, and everything, so, but uh, no, it's, it's, it's quite hard work, yeah. And Martin showing just what he means here, hanging on to this machine for dear life as it storms to fourth place in qualifying with a 6.87 at over 200 miles per hour. Staying with nitro bikes, but now with more cylinders, more RPM and more horsepower. This is FAM Europe top fuel bike. Well, everyone's got their own ideas, but personally we've, we're one of the only bikes here that's uh, running an air clutch. And uh, that was a Phil Bainbridge uh, design. But it's made a big difference to the way we can tune this motorcycle, especially in the 60 foot. We're going to run with what we know runs and if we start shaking the tyre, then we're going to have to think about it pretty quick. 
So, you know, it's really suck it and see. That's Steve on the dealer in the auto blim lane. Putting in a great 6.36 second qualifying pass at just under 200 miles an hour. But then along came this guy, Philippos Papafilippou, or Fast Phil to his friends. He's on the Gulf Oil Puma engineering machine. It's his first time ever riding a nitro top fuel bike, so you think he'd take it easy. But no way, he's absolutely nailed it. 6.09 at 214 miles per hour. And another triple A contender here. This is Rickard Gustafsson, always one of the favorites for the title. And he puts in an opening 6.25. No, he has a lot of power left in it, so he will go a lot quicker. Into session two now, and another outing for Fast Phil. In the close season, I sold the bike um, to a friend of ours, Fast Phil, or Philippos Papafilippou from Greece. He's a great rider, rides in the class before, but on a funny bike or a pro mod bike rather than top fuel. This is his first time on a top fuel bike. And wait for it. One of the quickest ever runs in the world. 5.78 at 236 miles per hour. And wow, what a debut. All this year we're going to run the bike as we did before. Fundamentally, it's the, the Gulf Oil drag racing team, uh, same crew, same people. The only difference is I'm not in the hot seat, Phil's in it. Um, still running things as they were before and hopefully improving every race we go to. At the moment, this is in a very soft state of tune. So we have a lot of opportunity with this bike to run quicker. We now have a fantastic new track here at Santa Pod. I mean, uh, I mean hats off to the guys that have, have done all this here. It's just a, uh, well, I mean, well-beating track now and luckily we're able then to exploit the performance of our bike. Uh, we know we can run quicker and uh, we will. And a complete change of vehicle now. These are the FIA Pro Mods, the fastest door car class on the planet. And looking at some of the way out body styles, you could say they owe just as much to hot rodding as they do racing. But with around 3,000 horsepower, supercharged, turbocharged or nitrous V8 motors, performance is there in bucket loads. Extreme just doesn't come close. This is what 240 miles per hour in just six seconds looks like. And you better hope those parachutes work because stopping from these speeds in just a half mile shutdown area is just as difficult. Huge acceleration and violent deceleration in just six seconds. UK's own Andy Robinson, who we just rode on board with, and that's Sweden's Jan Eriksson closest to us. These two both driving full tube framed carbon fiber body blown Camaros. And we're taking a quick look at qualifying over the two days. Bruno Bada with the Gotham City Corvette there, and David Vegta in the Camaro. David straight into the fives. Yeah, it's a really good track. There's a lot of traction uh, in the 60 foot, a bit less than, and it's a bit bumpy here and there, but it's it's perfect. It's fun. It's fun. We're having fun. It's a great group of guys, and we got Summit behind us, and Viking Industry, Molding, and Exclusive Cars, and all the other guys. So uh, it's perfect. You never know exactly what to expect from the first first event of the year, but also here is the new track, so. We needed to go here and learn what to do and, and there's a big difference between this track and, and the old track here so uh, there's a lot of uh, thinking and trying and uh, running. An all Swedish pairing, that's Mickey Gilchrist in the left lane and Jimmy Orland in the right. These two ending up numbers one and two qualifiers at the end of session four and what a side by side run. And now back to FIA Top Fuel.
We're in qualifying session number three with Duncan Mikalev in the left lane running alongside Stefan Gunnarsson. Stefan currently in seventh place with a 5.99, so he would really like to improve on that now. And he does with that 4.45, which should make his place in the field a lot safer. So much raw power from these machines. So Stig Niergaard has just been dropped down to seventh after that last run. Mickey Kagared in the left lane, languishing in eighth place at the moment, and that's the bump spot. Oh, a huge fireball for Mickey, and that's why they moved away from dragsters with the engine in front of the driver. Mickey completely unhurt, but a huge amount of rebuilding to do on that motor. A nitro cloud hanging in the air there. Liam Jones in the near lane, that's India Erbacher. Liam currently in third position with a 3.95. India would also dearly love to run a three at this event. Big name to live up to, as Erbacher, of course, one of the most successful European drag racers ever. Great side-by-side -side run and improvement all round. Huge celebrations on the start line. Big, big, big footsteps to go in from that, but um, I have no pressure of him or from the team. The fans are super kind to me and super excited that there is a next generation driver in the Avocar Pit, so... It's very nice that uh, we have got Hindi into this uh, series as well, and I really welcome her. But when you put the helmet on, it doesn't actually matter if you're a man or a female. So we all look the same with the helmet on. But there again, I think that uh, Yindi is doing a good job, and um, so let's see if we can beat the guys. An all finish pairing. Anita in the left lane alongside current number one qualifier, Anti Horto. It's a good run by Anti Horto. Four flats, but no improvement for either driver this time out. Sunday afternoon and back to FAM top fuel bike qualifying. Steve Woolett over there on the dealer and that's fast Phil. Phil looking to beat that fantastic 578. It's a good strong pair of runs. Phil with a 6-0, Steve a 651. And then Rickard Gustafsson came back with this. Looking to beat that earlier 578 from Phil. He goes over 250 miles an hour, only the third rider on the planet to ever do that. And the first half of a new speed record in FAM Top Fuel Bike here at Santa Pod. Final qualifier for the FAA Top Fuel. Bjorn Martinson still not qualified, but finally gets down the track. A flash of flame and a 561. And that bumps Mickey Kagarid out of the field at the moment. Well, this is Mickey in the right lane, Stig Niergaard in the left lane. A make or break run here for Mickey, but he's off the power. He's out. He's not qualified. Stig powers on to a 4.23. The big news on that one, Mickey Kagarid has failed to make the field. Indy Erbacher trying to improve on that 4.10. Stefan Gunnarsson in the left lane, but both cars putting too much power in this time and failing to improve. It's a real fine line with these cars. Too little power gives tyre shake, too much power, and you break traction. Anita Makala, right lane. Liam Jones in the CBD Asylum Dragster, both well in the threes already. Strong runs in the cool evening air, but no improvement. So as the final two cars come to the line, join us after the break for more FIA Top Fuel action from Santa Pod. Final qualifying pair in FIA Top Fuel, Finland's Antti Horto and Malta's Duncan Mikolaj. Antti is currently at number one with a 390. No improvement this time, but that car is so consistent. Yeah, I'm really pleased for this. It was a perfect start for our season. We got uh, three good runs with uh, very good numbers and uh, motor is clean and everything works so we are very pleased with this this start uh, of course to, tomorrow is the day when the actual race starts but uh, we are expecting a lot 
Here's the final qualifying table after that session, with four cars running in the three-second zone. The new track certainly seems to be working for them. The big surprise, though, is Mickey Kagarad failing to qualify. So we move into race day and it's cooler and slightly overcast at the moment, which could affect track conditions. We're starting off with a look at FIA Pro Mod eliminations. Just one first round matchup to bring you in this 16 car field. Jan Eriksson left lane taking on Britain's Wayne Nicholson in the Lucky Devil. Tire shakes straight off the line for Jan. Wayne gets out in front and almost gets it. But the power of the orange Camaro overhauls him at the top end. And so to the quarterfinals and handing over to Daryl Bradford in the commentary box. Thanks very much, Bryn. Great to see Freddie Fangerstrom back with us again here at Centipod. Great to see him going to the finish line. This is a rematch of a week ago at the Door Slammers. That time round it was the semi-finals. Jimmy Orland taking on Fred. Fred with a bit of a wiggle off the start line. But it will be by a couple of car lengths. Jimmy Orland at 5.91. Great run for Freddie, though. 6.09. Norbert Kuno taking on Mickey Goldquist. And Norbert out of it early. Mickey, though, cruises for him anyway. 5.91, 2.45. Back on form. Kim Christensen with a red light in the near lane against Dave Vector. Dave with a couple of pedals, clicks it early. I think he saw that red light, 6.42, saves it for the semi-finals. On board with Andy Robinson, the NGK anger management. Camaro built by him and his family down there at the family business in Hampshire. The car back in the fives, taken on Yanni Eriksson on the far side of the racetrack. It was Andy just off the start line first, but where it counts at the finish line, Yanni Eriksson with a six flat. Not sure what the problem was there for Andy. Uh, we sucked basically. Um, just didn't uh, compensate for track conditions. You know, we were waiting down uh, in the fire road for quite a while. There was a couple of hold-ups, and the sunlight got on the track, heated it up, and, and we just didn't compensate for the change in track temperature. That's the bottom line. As a driver, I've got I've got a, a right foot, and if if I choose to stay in it longer than I should, which we all do occasionally. Um, and when you get tyre shake, the cars do move real quick and, uh, and it'll change lanes, I've had it. Um, so it's down to me. Um, if I went to the start line worrying about whether the, the track was okay, whether my car was okay, then it, it, I wouldn't race very well. Top fuel dragster, round one. Anita Michaela looking for a bit of redemption after a pretty horrible 2017. She wore the number one in 2016, or the end of it anyway, but last year, nothing went their way at all. They really didn't have a great time. She is taking on India Urbacher. Yes, the Kings of Nitro's daughter. That is, as Urbacher's little girl on the far side, taking on one of her heroes, Anita Mekula. Now, everybody in qualifying was pretty good, to be honest with you. However, race day, the conditions have changed. It's got quite a bit cooler. Problems for India almost instantly. Anita with a couple of cylinders out, but that doesn't matter. 398, 284 miles an hour, and her first wind light of the season. Stefan Gunnarsson on the far side of the racetrack from Sweden, taking on Liam Jones from the UK. Liam's third season, I think it is actually, maybe even his full season in FIA Top Fuel Dragster. He's been down in the threes on a number of occasions, now he wants his first ever event win. Qualified fantastically with a 3-9, both having issues off the start line, all sorts of pedalling and driving going on and it's Liam with a 5.15 at 2.46. Watch again in replay, you can see Stefan blow the tyres off, go completely sideways and Liam got there first. Well, sometimes it's not all about how much power you've got, it's all about how much you manage it. And getting it down to the racetrack is a really, really tricky thing. I hate to say it, ask Mickey Kagarad and the team, they had a horrible time in qualifying. They were number nine, the man who was number eight is there. Bjorn Martinson gets to race Anti Horto, the number one qualifier in round one. 
Well, Anti with both of them with problems. This is going to be a coasting race to the finish line, but it's Anti who has more momentum. My goodness me, you would not normally expect a 670 to take a round win in top fuel, smoke the tyres and under strict instructions not to get back in the throttle again. He was a sitting duck waiting for Bjorn to come past him. Last year's champ, Duncan Mikulev, looking for a repeat feat in 2018. There he is. He was the first of any of our top fuel races to make a good, strong run down the 1,000-foot course here on the new racetrack. Back in qualifying, takes on Stig Niergaard in the eye of the storm on the far side from Denmark. Problems for both of them, both spin the tyres. Who's going to get their first wheel again? It's who's brave enough with their right foot and their wallet to get back into it. Oh, you can hear parts and pieces being tortured. But it is Stig with a very unlikely round win. Well, that smile on your face actually comes from people making faces behind, but it's got to come from the run as well because there were some amazingly exciting runs there. Maybe not all the fastest, but you get the job done. Yeah, this was it. I mean, it, the temperature had dropped a lot from yesterday, so it was a bit of a sketchy first round for everybody, really. Um, but we did it. Do you know what I mean? we, just, we were more persistent, so yeah, can't complain. Does that make it a bit difficult getting into this one thing, what we're going to do, or you're thinking, well, it's warmed up now, back to yesterday's tune? Uh, yeah, the conditions are very similar to where as yesterday, so we'll probably stick to what we know. So we ran decent all weekend, so yeah. When we come to this race here, we had a complete new clutch system. Um, we changed to six dish clots and an oil management, and our basic was on zero. Um, we need to have a couple of runs to, uh, to get it working. Do you think you're going into the semi-finals with an idea what you're doing or is it still really a test? Um, we're testing a lot. Um, we try to make the semi-finals right now. We change a lot for, for each run and uh, try to get the drive shaft what we want to have. On to FIM Top Fuel Bike and we caught up with Fast Phil. Yeah, it's quite exciting. I didn't expect that. Even the first round we said just do a 60 feet, see how it feels. The guys are making fun of me that uh, maybe we have a miscommunication problem between English and Greek. They said 60 feet, I understood 6-0. We did the 6-0, it felt nice. It was exciting for sure. Uh, I didn't expect that, but uh, the whole uh, situation, the bike and the whole team made me feel confidence, extra confidence, and it felt nice during the run, and I just kept it on, and it did those numbers. And uh, as, I get, as I learn more from the team, it did it with a very conservative uh, setup, with the guys took 15% of power off, and uh, it worked. It was the right time at the right place. The conditions were okay. The air was nice and the track was very sticky. Couple of highlights from FIM Top Fuel Bike Round 1. Rickard Gustafsson on a nitro bike. I thought I'd never say that, to be honest with you. He spent so, so long on that wonderful funny bike that I think he still owns actually taking on Stu Crane on the far side Stu left Rickard for dead however that is the difference between a funny bike and a top fuel bike 596 at 250 miles an hour for Rickard one of only a handful of people in the world that's been over 250 and also that backs up the record at 250 miles an hour in Europe so well done Rickard Fast Phil having a dream debut weekend so far. Taking on Thomas Pedersen. Another funny bike versus top fuel bike matchup. Thomas off the start line first. Well, Phil spins the tyre and is out of it early. However, the wind light is still awarded to Phil. Uh, I have the timing issue on that run but Phil was actually awarded the win. Look at that. He was there for the taking. If Thomas Pettersson made a six-second run like he's done on numerous occasions, that'd be fast Phil done.
And so to the semi-finals in FIA Top Fuel with Anita getting ready to race. So how did she manage to do so much better than the rest of the field in round one? I have a good crew. It's all thanks to them. My guys are working so well and they know how to tune the car out, uh, up this kind of track. And uh, so it all comes from there. Very different temperatures though. It's, it's much warmer now than it was this morning. That's right. But they say that it's easier to uh, tune the car for for warmer weather. When it's cold weather, the tuning window is more narrowed. When it's a warm weather, the tuning window is more wider. So it is easier. I guess even in the final, you ignore the other car, you just race your own race? Absolutely right. Even my car is bit that way that I have high walls and my helmet is that I can't see the other car unless it is so much in front. Because if the other car is doing something, I might respond and it's like a wrong thing to do on that high speed. But um, yeah, I just do my own thing and uh, when I go over the finish line, then the run is done. So join us after the break as we move into the semi-finals. Welcome back to Santapod in the FIA Top Fuel semi-finals. Anita Mekula with the family Top Fueler taking on another young lad from Finland, Antti Horto. We were blessed with beautiful warm temperatures for most of this weekend. And as you can see, the crowd and the sun have come out for this semi-final run. Antti was the number one qualifier, went 3.90. Anita wasn't quite on her normal pace, but she's still been in the 390s over the 1,000-foot course, this replacing the first final of the year. Anita's crew chief gives her the thumbs up, as does Antis. Almost dead even off the start line. Looks like Anti Horto had it in the bag, but he had to back out of it due to a mechanical issue, and it was Anita with a three. 90 at 310 miles an hour. I think they're pretty happy, to be honest with you. That's their quickest run of the weekend, and she's in the final again. So, will it be a Finland versus Denmark or England final? Liam Jones from the UK with the CBD Asylum, the new look CBD Asylum top fuel dragster from the stable of Rune Fjeld. He was in the low 390s in qualifying as well. Taking on Stig Niergaard. Now Stig from Denmark uh, has been in the running for the Top Fuel Championship a number of years, but just never quite got over the line. He's been number two a few times. They really, really do want to try and turn that around. So far this weekend, it's been fair to say Stig has been pretty lucky to get to this point. Hasn't put down a full run in qualifying or elimination so far, and he's up against a real tough customer in Liam. However, that tough customer red lights away his semi-final place, 4.02 at 2.51. That would have been another three-second run. The crew with their hands on their heads can't believe it. It's Stig and Anita in the final. So, top fuel bike semi-finals for the FIM. Lorcan Parnell with that absolutely wicked Storm funny bike taking on the new kid on the block. Well, with a top fuel bike anyway. That's Phil Papafilippou from Greece. Phil's on the far side. He had a real lucky round win in the first round of eliminations. And he got left on by Lorcan, who's given him a really, really good race. But it's Phil, the power of the top fuel bike again, 6.24, and he clicked that early. Eric Ricard from France against Ricard Gustafsson. Great to see Eric back here racing at Santibod. He had a very, very nasty spill at the top end on this bike at the European finals last year. But uh, he's showing no signs of any problems at all this weekend. Banks Rickard off the start line. Rickard on and off the throttle. Can he get back in it long enough to do it? And he does. Just my goodness, that was close. 6.65 beats a 
and up in the pro mod pits, there's plenty of work being done before their semi finals. Jan Eriksson seems pretty happy though. It's only the second year I run pro modify, so yeah, we're a happy team right now. Yeah, we're making changes on the car, and we hope we're doing the right thing, but we never know because we're quite new, so we don't have so much data to, to work with. But yeah, the team, and we, we try really hard to, to find the car. And it was touch and go whether David Vegter would make it down to the start line in time for his semi-final race with Nicky Gilkfist. But thankfully he did, so it's back over to Daryl. Promod semi-finals rolling round behind the tower for the first time in 2018. Jimmy Orland with the old 51. Jan Eriksson with the Camaro. Now that Camaro is pretty unique. It's uh, I think the only car in the whole of the European FIA Pro Mod series, racing the whole of Europe anyway, that was built in Finland by Paul Tammy Brander. Uh, almost everything else is built in Sweden, America or the UK. Made no difference though, the car's still very competitive indeed with Yanni at the wheel, but this time round it's Jimmy Orland wire to wire, 593 takes out a 602. That was a pretty good race actually to be honest with you. And Yanni Eriksson still not quite in the fives. Mickey Gulquist taking on David Vector from the Netherlands. Now, you would normally think Mickey would be odds on favourite for this one. Uh, he's run in the five nines pretty much all weekend. But David, last weekend at the door slammers, went 588, which no one has come close to this weekend. And it's Dave off the start line first, but Mickey has got his nose in front. And he's got the car in front as he goes over the finish line. 592, 241, takes out Dave's 6.01. So that's the final set as Stig Niergaard rolls round, as does the Hope family in Pro Stock Bike. This is the time of the weekend that they all wait for. Yeah, we are in the final. What can we say? The bike is an amazing bike, and the whole crew and Ian's advices made it all work out nicely. But can Rickard take him in the final? Yeah, absolutely. Best interview ever. Pro Stock Bike final, Maurice Patron and Alex Hope. Alex goes red on the tree by a minute amount. And Maurice goes 7.45 at 174. Congratulations to the Frenchman. FIM Super Street Bike, Morgan's Lund, Steve Venables. Morgan's with a triple O, too light, but Steve Venables with the unbelievable performance. 6.93 at 2.10. Both of those two over 210 miles an hour. The Super Twins, Marcus Christensen has been the class of the field all weekend, running down into the six threes, unbelievably, with the budget team from Denmark. But unfortunately, after the burnout, he's got a fluid leak, so he's being shut off. It's Hans Olaf Olstad with the Thunderstruck. A buy and a very, very deserved win for him. 684, 200 miles an hour. FYA Pro Stock. Stefan Enrid taking on Robin Noren. Robin's first ever trip to a final round in the near lane. But it's Stefan Enrid with a stellar reaction time, a 007. A wire-to-wire -wire win as well. 660 takes out Robin's 6.70. Teams congratulating each other. Pro Stock is a very tight-knit community and some terrific racing as well. So it's a top methadol final. You may have seen this one before. Dennis and Timo Harberman. On the far side is Timo Harberman. Nearest to the camera is Dennis, and that one was all Timo with a 5.30 at 2.67. Dennis with the fastest speed, though, at 2.69. FIA Pro modified two Swedes in the final. A familiar scenario and a familiar pair of faces as well, actually. These two were number one and two in the championship last year. Mickey Gulquist was number one. Jimmy Orland was number two. Jim and the team are going to be doing everything they can to reverse that after last year. Jimmy won the door slammers last weekend here at Santa Pod. 
But this time round, it's Mickey G with the start line advantage and the win as well. 590, 246 miles an hour to the point where the crew are actually celebrating before he gets over the finish line. Terrific run. They're all still real good friends and it's a long season, but Mickey G leaves Santa Pod with the points lead. On to two wheels. The matchup we have all been waiting for throughout the whole weekend. Ricard against Phil. Two of Europe's quickest top fuel machines. Ricard has been in the 580s. Phil, on his first ever weekend, actually also had second ever run in the 570s. So this could be one hell of a final. Actually, I'm sure it will be. They made each other famous a few years ago because when they both had pro mod bikes, they both had almost a foot race to the finish line. I think Ricard won it in 22 seconds or something like that. Well, it looks like it's Phil way out there in front at the moment, but Ricard's bike runs really fast through the finish line, but not fast enough. 6.01 takes a 6.02, and Phil with his first ever win. What can I say? More than delighted. It, it worked out. The whole weekend was uh, probably my best weekend. Uh, bike in one piece. All in order, no damages, an amazing crew. All the advices from me and King paid the price. <laughs> um, I'm more than happy. Well, more than happy is Phil, and more than happy will be one of these two. Our final final of the weekend. The Chicken Express from Finland. That's Anita Michaela in the near lane against Stig Nergaard. These two have battled it out against each other on racetracks around Europe for many, many years now. However, so far this weekend, the performance advantage by a long margin has actually gone to Anita. Stig has been real lucky to get this far, but anything can happen, and it's Stig way out there in front. They both click it off before the finish line, but it's Stig that takes the win. Well, problems in qualifying, but it gets the job done on race day. When, when we had the first two qualifying rounds, we really thought we was lost, completely lost, and none of the qualifying was really good. Uh, qualifying number three was for for, uh, 420 or something, uh, not really good, but good enough to go in the field. I race uh, 34 years right now in drag racing, and I don't remember at least 20 years in top fuel. And I like to work with all the big machines and the nitro methane. I love uh, to work with that. So that was the 2018 FIA FIM main event here at Santa Pod. From here, the championship heads to Europe before coming back to the UK in September for the grand finale at the Euro Finals. Our next coverage will be from the Euro Finals, and I hope you join us then.